James Robertson's novel, The Testament of Gideon Mack, which was long listed for the 2006 Man Booker Prize, revolves around Edinburgh publisher Patrick Walker's discovery of a manuscript written by Gideon Mack, referred to as his last testament. In this narrative, Gideon Mack is depicted as a Scottish minister in modern Scotland who grapples with doubts about God, leading him to an unexpected encounter with the devil. The story's epilogue is distinct from the main plot, offering a journalist's report that details how the publisher learned of Mack's last testament and includes interviews with people mentioned in the manuscript. Gideon Mack, a minister of the Church of Scotland, hails from the fictional coastal town of Monomasket, located between Dundee to the south and Aberdeen to the north. He reluctantly follows in his father's footsteps as a minister, even though he had originally trained to be an English teacher. Ministry, however, proves to be an ill-suited vocation for him. Unlike typical ministers, Mack does not believe in God, especially not in the manner expected of his profession. He neglects his wife Jenny and is engaged in an affair with Elsie, his best friend's wife. Strangely, Mack, a rational man in most aspects, is haunted by a persistent feeling of being observed or controlled from a distance, which he associates with a recurring spasm in one of his arms. These doubts about his career, mental state, and life choices plague him. One fateful day, while chasing a fellow minister's runaway dog, Mac stumbles into the notorious Black Jaws, a gorge with the Keldo River at the bottom. Local residents assume he perished, but to their astonishment, he returns three days later, claiming to have encountered the devil. Mac insists that the devil saved him from certain death in the gorge, mended his broken leg, though he stole his shoes, and engaged in a three-day-long conversation in an underground cavern. This discussion covered a wide range of topics, including the devil's sympathy for God due to humanity's wavering faith. Mac openly shares the contents of this discussion with his congregation, which causes immediate outrage and scandal. His blasphemy spreads rapidly, leading to his ostracization by the community and ridicule from tabloids across Scotland. His church abandons him, and with limited options, Mac leaves Monomasket. Months later, his lifeless body is discovered atop Ben Alder Mountain. The police investigation concludes that Mac did not meet foul play but took his own life. His enigmatic manuscript, an account of his conversation with the devil, is the only thing he leaves behind. Patrick Walker, the Edinburgh publisher, receives the manuscript and contemplates whether to publish it. Mac's account paints a complex picture of a man with mixed feelings about his career and a desire to do good, hampered by uncertainty about how to achieve it. To uncover the truth about Mac's story and his mysterious demise, Walker dispatches reporter Harry Caithness to Monomasket to interview Mac's former associates and friends. The responses collected form the epilogue of the Testament of Gideon Mac, offering third-party perspectives on Mac and his actions, ultimately revealing him to be an unreliable narrator. The extent of this unreliability is left for readers to decipher. Was his encounter with the devil a supernatural reality or the product of a deranged mind? In many ways, James Robertson's novel delves into the divide between appearances and essences. Despite Mac's disbelief in God, he worked as a minister for years, raised funds for charity, and preached moral values to his congregation while violating them in his personal life. The novel does not definitively confirm whether Mac's encounter with the devil was real, but it underscores the tangible consequences that arise from the encounter, including the social fallout that ultimately leads to his demise. The novel's exploration of duality is likened to works by James Hogg and Robert Louis Stevenson. Additionally, aside from his novels for adults, James Robertson is also recognized as a co-founder and general editor of the imprint Itchy Koo, which specializes in publishing children's books in the Scots language. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.